While the ancient Egyptians were building the pyramids, the Chinese were already experts at making an extraordinary strong and lightweight material, silk. But what's really extraordinary is how many discrete steps go into its making. Silk production begins with this homely little insect, the flightless moth, Bombex mori. In less than a week, it lays more than 500 eggs and dies soon thereafter. All of those eggs hatch into an army of hungry silkworms, whose favorite food are the leaves of the mulberry tree. The silkworms eat until they've stored enough energy to wrap themselves in cocoons. After eight or nine days, the cocoons are ready for the silk making process to begin. I've come to the Chongde Silk Factory, 100 miles southwest of Shanghai, just to see how silk is actually made. Now, each one of these bags here contains about 20,000 cocoons and is steamed for about 15 minutes. The steaming helps melt the wax-like glue that holds the cocoon together. The silk thread is removed from the whole cocoon by a process known as unreeling. The cocoons are placed in basins of lukewarm water where mechanical arms agitate them and grasp a single loose thread. While the cocoon tumbles in the water, this thread is gently drawn and reeled up on spools. There are signs of silk being produced in China from about as early as we have records of complex culture. That is from the uh, second millennium BC. If we look at the remains, for instance, from the Shang Dynasty, which begins about 1500 BC, we see fragments of silk already from there. And by the time we come to the beginnings of the great Chinese empires from about 200 BC, it is assumed that just in the same way that a farmer will work in the fields to produce grain, if they're in the right part of the country, his wife and his daughters will be working to produce silk. Silk is incredibly strong. It has a very high tensile strength, higher even than nylon. Some even claim a single silk fiber the diameter of a pencil could lift a 747. To find out if this could be true, we asked Bruce Denziger to do the calculations. The strand of silk has a strength of about 0.65 gigapascals. That's about, say, 95,000 PSI. It's equivalent to two or three times the strength of ordinary steel that we use for construction. A pencil has about a 5 16th inch diameter. What diameter of silk could support a 747 based on the, those strengths and the, and the assumed weight of a 747? And the answer to that is about two and three eighths inch diameter. Thicker than a pencil, but still very impressive. No wonder silk has become the model for today's extraordinary synthetic materials. These new materials were developed by investigating the chemistry of silk. In fact, even Kevlar was found by investigations into the chemistry of silk. It's impossible to understate the importance of silk in the West. In time, it became a valuable resource in aviation. In fact, in World War I, artillery spotters used silk air balloons to spy across enemy lines. Silk parachutes were used not only to save downed pilots, but to get troops quickly into position, an important strategic factor in the war. The ancient Chinese inventions of silk and paper would lead to increasingly innovative ways of getting man's feet off the ground and into the air. In 1391, China produced the first toilet paper. The pulp paper came in two feet square sheets for the exclusive use of the emperor. 